So, hi guys, uh, I'm Jimmy Lucien. I'm a product owner at the uh, Angry Creative. Um, we're a web bureau, and these are my infos. This should actually be the last slide, I think. <laughs> I mean, so we're finished. Oh, yeah, it was the last slide. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Yes, a bigger image of me. Like, yeah, with the whiteboards and stuff. Yeah, I'm a product owner, so um, pretty much uh, at, at Angry Creative, that means that um, I'm a magician, pretty much. No, but I I, uh, I work with um, um, prioritizing stuff, more more or less, and uh, uh, making uh, making our our clients uh, choose what uh, what is the best product uh, value for their project. Um, my talk is uh, open source entrepreneurship, and uh, well, it's it's, um, it's pretty much um, um, well. From my point of view, we we uh, run a bureau, and you can you can run a business using open source in a lot of different ways. You can uh, you can be a product company. Uh, do we have any any guys here working with products today? Two two people, yeah. So it's. Uh, it's a, I think it can perhaps be a little bit different from what I am going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, you can uh, do this as a bureau or as a uh, single cons consultant. Anyone is, do we have any bureau people here? Yeah, like all of them. And uh, consultants, any loan consultants here today? Yeah, a couple of them. All right. Yeah, but uh, this is primarily going to be uh, about what I think um, bureaus are, are should should do if they work with uh, open source. Yes, um, it boils down it boils down to three things. Um, really, it's getting things done, um, claiming responsibility, and future proofing uh, your business. I guess. Um, and that that is my talk. Thank you. Um, <laughs> exactly. Getting things done is well. That is pretty much about um, employing good people and and growing culture. Uh, that is uh, somewhat abstract, but um, um, and and how do you do that? Um, well, we we work a lot with. Um, Agile processes because um, uh, we believe in a lot of empowerment um, and also. Um, whoa. I'm sorry, I'm so hungover. Um, <laughs> where are my notes anyway? Uh, I don't have notes here. No, no notes. Okay, thank you for that one. Uh, yeah. Can anyone help me? Uh, I'd like to see my notes. Notes. Um, so sorry, guys. Yeah. You should probably disable the mirroring. Yeah. Sorry. So I work with computers. Did I say that? <laughs> uh, but pretty much, um, um, it's it's a lot of uh, I like agile. Agile principles is a lot about um, empowering people so they, that they can be aware of what they're doing and accountable for what they're doing. Uh, I mean, that's, that's uh, and uh, while at the same time feeling that they're, they're adding real value to what they're doing. Um, okay, is that it? Yeah, um, it's good. So, so in in our company, we work a lot with um, like yes, just, just the because um, we're a bureau, right? And we sell we sell things by the hour. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, actually, they're gone. That is. Like magic. Ah, this guy. What? It's the 911 guy at yeah. uh, Angry Creative, by the way. No, <laughs> and give a round of applause to Plus. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, 
embarrassed. <laughs> um, well, um, I mean, and, and Agile is, is having, pretty much having meetings, lots of meetings, and spending time communicating. Uh, most things that actually go wrong, at least in our company, is actually communication. That is what breaks down. Um, someone doesn't tell someone else about something, and you get shit, pretty much. So if, if, we, if we help people to just speak to one another, everything will pretty much always uh, be all right in the end, because no one really wants to, no one wants to do anything bad. They, I mean, everyone, if you work, you, want, you always want to do your best, right? Um, and, uh, um, and if you give people the best tools to do that, they will do an awesome job. Um, but you also need help. I mean, we've spent a lot of time with, uh, like, time tracking. How many people here use time tracking software? A lot of you. Do you find it to be uh, an awesome experience? No. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're a bit biased. So, so what, what, what's, the, what's the most common problem? You, you said yes. With time tracking? Yeah. Uh, if you don't... Uh, <laughs> Do you find it hard to, uh, like... Uh, uh, to know where you're in in your project, uh, or, or I mean, when you're when you're actually doing the train track, tracking, do you, do you do you feel a sense of okay, uh, this is where my project is heading, or is it just you're putting time into a black hole? Uh, often the, the first the first one, uh, but sometimes uh, it's uh, like a black hole also. It depends on the project, I think. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. We've had a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, things like that. I mean, um, a lot of the, the the problem with time tracking usually, if you if you just buy into a random uh, software service uh, solution, you is that you, there, it's always kind of hard to actually do the tra time tracking and get a good sense of where am I at in my project. And to be honest, uh, I mean, WordPress projects are are not like uh, well, some of them are, but not a lot of them are like huge enterprise projects. Um, I mean, how um, how big is your um, average project here? Uh, is is um, does anyone have projects more than uh, a thousand hours uh, like regularly? No, like five hundred hours. Like one, yeah. Uh, hundred hours. Yeah. 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 Does anyone have like tiny projects, like 50, 50 hours? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's and that's. Um, um, I mean, if you're a bunch of people um, in, in your bureau, it's going to be hard to keep in track of them. So, like, good software uh, is, is uh, even if, even if you have really good agile principles, you need really good software to go with it because uh, uh, you can't really. Otherwise, you have to be a like, control freak. Uh, in order to uh, and and, that, and and then you're like kind of abandoning the agile uh, the agile thing. So so um, and also like improvements. You have to have time to actually improve uh, improve upon yourself and improve upon the process. Um, we have um, uh, or, or like we try to do do something like this that um, we. Um, I mean, you can you regularly you have to make mistakes every day, right? Otherwise, you won't learn anything. Or what do you? Is that wrong? No. Um, that's what I believe. And and you can you can either you can do uh, you can do business as usual or like have have a good process. And that's you know you do the things that you I I know that this work uh, and it's always worked, but. You don't kind of you don't stretch your own limits, right? You can't be there all the time because uh, you'll, yeah, you'll you'll get left behind, right? And then you have your area where you do experiments, um, and uh, and you can you can uh, um, you can either you can you can be a, it can be a successful experiment or it could be a well a failure. But, but it's still, it's, a, it's an experiment. And you say, like, okay, this will be an experiment. And you can actually tell the client, like, this is going to be an experiment. Uh, so I don't know how it will turn out, but you're going to pay me anyway. Right. 
but when you do a, a, a mistake, uh, that's like, okay, uh, that's, that's a bit harder. Because, uh, um, I mean, uh, you will look bad to the client most of the times, um, but, but um, you still do them, obviously. But you want to like, fine tune your process so that um, instead of doing uh, a lot of, a lot of, being a, a lot on the mistake side of things, you, uh, you instead encourage people to do more like, okay, this is a good process, this is what we're going to do. And then, for learning, you do experiments because, uh, well, pretty much, if you if you dive a lot into the mistakes area, uh, your your uh, your sales will go down. Um, so that's one part of uh, uh, of it, like getting things done and just um, helping people doing a good job. The second part is actually claiming responsibility. If you got the first thing nailed down, right, um, you have to, I think, like the next step uh, of, of, your, um, of you um, taking your business to the next step, I, I mean, um, is actually claiming responsibility. Um, and, uh, I mean, a big part of, uh, of making a delivery is, okay, uh, who is responsible for maintenance, bugs, and uh, hidden flaws? And how do we deal with that? How do you guys uh, deal with uh, hidden flaws? Does, do you have maintenance plans or, or, or uh, haunts? I run and hide. You run and hide? <laughs> yeah. No? How do, you, how, do you do, how do you deal with uh, hidden flaws and, uh, and bugs? Uh, I keep a little contact with the clients. Yeah. Um, uh, depending on the bugs, we set up projects for solving it. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, does uh, uh, does anyone have their? I mean, does anyone leave their? Uh, when you make a delivery, do you leave that and and okay, okay, client? Now you'll do the updates yourself, or just rely on the automatic updates. Uh, anyone does that? Like, um, no, no one. Depending on project. Depending on project. The client wants it. Yeah, sure. But you have a like a, some kind of maintenance plan. Mm, we have projects without maintenance plan actually, but the client is aware of that. And she wants it, so it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. But then you then you do this. Then you actually claim responsibility, and you say, well, we can take responsibility for your site, but you're gonna have to pay for it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that is like the. If, I mean, if you got the staff and you got them in the in the zone and um, they're doing the projects, and then after after the project is done, you're going to have to claim the responsibility. Um, and um, and you can do this in a lot of different ways. Um, pretty much, um, is anyone has anyone tried test driven development? This guy, yeah. I'm going to argue that it's pretty much impossible working with a, a CMS like WordPress and do test-driven development um, because, like, when we, I like, I mean, just when when uh, when we do stuff, maybe you do something different, um, but when we do stuff, we we kind of pick like, okay, this is the core, yeah, and these plugins are awesome, uh, and they 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 take the the CMX experience to the next level, and we don't really have to have to do anything. But on the other hand, um, have you ever downloaded a plugin with tests? Anyone? Has anyone seen a plugin with actual tests? You have this guy. Yeah, it's it's pretty rare though to see a plugin with tests. So so when you so when you uh, when you build your project, there's like pretty much no way to make it test driven because even if if WordPress has a lot of tests, the core has a lot of tests, you you will you will have you're gonna have to um, kind of hope that plugins actually work every time and they, that uh, they're kind of bug free. Yeah. Uh, so so instead we've adapted a kind of a behavior driven development approach. So so we. Um, and that means, like, if I press this button, 
this will happen. Uh, and we, we, um, we take that from our uh, user stores, pretty much, and, and then we can do tests around that, depending on wallet, wallet of the client. Your thousand hour uh, client there will probably pay for this. Uh, yeah. Um, then we have, um, we have three layers of testing. Uh, I, one is unit tests, you know, test functions, um, and that is, well, uh, we, we can't really test uh, other people's plugins, really. Uh, it'll be a huge um, overhead, um, and then the tests will break because people change their plugins and they will not care for our, our tests, now will they? Um, but we can unit test our stuff, at least, if we do some crazy math. Thing. Uh, we use uh, a lot of Selenium tests. Uh, where's Andreas? He loves Selenium. No, it's not here. Um, but that is pretty much we. we uh, every, does everyone know what Selenium is? No. Okay. Tell us. Selenium is uh, pretty much you you fake uh, a web browser and uh, and you go in and you press that button, and then you press that button, and then you press that button, and then you, uh, okay, I'm gonna get this result. Uh, so, so it's, an, it's, an, uh, it's a way of doing the manual testing. If you, if you have maintenance plans today, you probably do um, manual testing. Does anyone do manual testing here? For, for, yeah, you do, you do, you do, you do, you do, yeah. So, so, so um, it's, it's a way of, of uh, like every time you do a commit or every time you just add a little extra feature, you can you can automate that process. So instead of you like, okay, so I changed uh, five uh, five lines of code and the client wants it up, but I'm not sure that anything broke. Uh, but let's just hope for the best because I the client will go uh, ape shit on me for uh, uh, spending three hours just doing manual testing of everything. So, so it's, it's a way of uh, automating that uh, process. And uh, it makes it, I mean, I can work on the project and then I can give it to Hans here. And, and he can work on the project. And, when he, and then he will get the error messages uh, when he breaks the site. Uh, so he can't actually commit it to production. Um, sorry, Hans. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but, but, but that's the way it works. Anyway. Um, the next part of it is uh, using a thing, uh, using an open source project uh, named Wraith. It's uh, we we forked it a bit. This guy again, actually, uh, <laughs> and um, it what it does is that um, we had a lot of issues. Like we changed a couple of lines of CSS, uh, and we're like yeah, so uh, everything looks looks good, and then uh, like two days later, the the client like was screaming at us, ah, this looks awful. Uh, or or uh, it could be like a, an update to a plugin or, a, or, or WordPress and like some CSS things that, you know, at some, at one of the 1,000 different views, it, the thing was a bit off, yeah? So, so what this does is that, because um, you can't really, I mean, you can't, when you, when you make, if you change 10 lines of CSS, you can't really, uh, check through like a thousand posts to see if something sh has changed, right? It it's not just it's just not um, economically economically viable. Uh, so what this does is that it goes to the site, it uh, scrapes the site for all the URLs, and then it screenshots all of them, and uh, then it goes into a like testing environment where we have a, a pretty fresh uh, database dump. Um, and uh, and then scrape that one and do the same thing and then it calculates the difference uh, so the de developer gets uh, uh, okay so uh, uh, these 100 pages are 0% off and these five here uh, maybe you should check them out yeah hmm. um, it's a pretty awesome project you can run it um, it's called rate you can google it it's uh, it's um, um, made by BBC. It's a it's a pretty fairly hack 
like we say. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, really, but but uh, it, it's cool. Uh, Feel like this ugly hacking. Uh, <laughs> and you can run it on you can run it on your uh, uh, on your uh, on your locally on your computer and just say uh, just point to the production environment and then to your own like local testing environment and then you'll get a, a HTML result and that's really good because uh, uh, like yeah like the top that one thousand hour project I mean you probably have a lot of pages and uh, posts and many other things right no yes yes. So, so um, that's um, it's a really good tool. Uh, when we when we start using it, we got um, well, um, we we regularly do maintenance and uh, updates for our uh, for our clients. And uh, for like we did that for uh, for a full week, yeah, we just updated stuff. And then the week after, we got a shitstorm in our uh, ticket system, like. People saying, ah, this little CSS thing here and this little CSS thing there. And when we started using this, uh, instead of getting uh, a lot of tickets, we got pretty much none. So it's uh, that was um, uh, you could uh, you could say that it's uh, the red thing is a really good thing. Um, right now, it doesn't support like uh, uh, like doing as Perfect would be if you, you could do an actual Selenium test, uh, like click here, click here, click here, click here, and actually test that while <coughs> at the same time doing the um, uh, like screenshot uh, comparison. But you can't do that. So um, I would rec I would totally recommend that for anyone building uh, like uh, marketing pages or, or, um, or stuff like that. Um, but you can run it on, on uh, with a few hacks. You can you can force it to log in, um, but it's a, it's a little more work, I guess. Um, the next part of uh, of building a great company that uh, works with open source is future proofing it. And how do you do that? Well, um, you have to. Um, I think you will have to. Um, start contributing actually to uh, to the to the in our case WordPress project project um, and I mean in a way I mean if you if you if you uh, the first one is kind of I mean you can do that if you're like one guy yeah or person it's a hen uh, the the second one is a bit harder because uh, uh, you. I mean, you can't be uh, awake all the time. Um, yeah. Or you, I mean, sometimes you gotta sleep to, to, uh, to uh, in order to. Um, so you gotta have um, actual um, comrades that you work with, so you can be sure that uh, someone covers for you if you're away or your shadow is sick or whatever. So, so that is like uh, if, if um, in the evolution of things like. Uh, you start off with uh, just getting things done and doing it properly, and then you kind of uh, you grow and you get to uh, you hire some people, yeah, and you can start actually taking responsibility. And I think uh, to future-proof the business, uh, you actually you you need money and growth because. Um, um, well, I mean, growth without a purpose is is, uh, is cancer, basically. But um, but we need to grow uh, to in order to be influential in the community. And uh, and why do we need that? Yeah, well, because we need to be able to uh, influence the project of WordPress. Um, so so we can say like, okay, uh, maybe we want, we want the, the project to go a little bit here because. Um, without, I mean, um, we try to contribute ourselves. Has, has anyone contributed to? Uh, has anyone made a plugin that uh, they made uh, open source and available in the uh, repository? Two. Okay. Anyone worked on core? No. Uh, okay. One. Uh, anyone made a theme? Freely available. That guy. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not like super common, and I mean. In the end, you're gonna to have to. I mean, it's a financial decision. What? 
if I just picked any one of you, um, I'm going to go with the thousand hour project guy, because that's you. Uh, what else, uh, is it that you're not interested in like doing open source uh, um, stuff? Or, or what, what's the main reason you haven't been able to contribute? Yeah, the main reason uh, so far is uh, that um, the company that I'm working for is uh, new to WordPress. Yeah. I think we're into the second year now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be talking about it, but uh, we're still not there yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I mean like in, in, a, in a matter of... Because it, it costs money to, to, uh, to make, make to, to help people in your company to actually contribute. And if you're like a two-man, three-man studio, how, how big are the companies that you work in? Is it like anyone, anyone less than five people? No, oh, no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, well, I mean, and that's super hard because uh, it costs a lot of money to actually, okay, so let's, uh, let's just, uh, let's have a week and just like hack and see what we come up with. I mean, uh, that's kind of expensive, right? I mean, you have to, that's salaries for a couple of people uh, just, just doing things for fun. So, so, I mean, you have to calculate it on a like, percentage level. If you want to do that, you can say, okay, we can afford to actually uh, give this much back to the community. But if you're, if you're like four people or two, I mean, that's not a lot of time, now is it? But if you're like 50 or 100 people, that percentage, you know, it's, it's, uh, it turns into a lot of time uh, and uh, a lot of good stuff happening in the community. So, uh, and if we, if we want to change the course of how WordPress develops itself, we're going to have to build, well, large companies that, uh, with a lot of people in them that, uh, that wants to contribute. Um, Objection Manor. Yes. Uh, just a short uh, plug for Perilla Riedmark and the Internet Fonden, uh, gold sponsor. Remember Internet Fonden because this is the typical thing that would uh, land on their uh, table. Uh, right, Flux? Yeah. Some of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Financing for yeah, yeah, plugins that is... uh, that, uh, for the commons is a typical thing that uh, the Swedish Internet Fonden does. Every time we register the .sc, it feeds back to the community at, lar at large. So uh, finance your plugins and have fun for a week and give a fuck about crazy clients. Yeah, that, that is true. That you is true. Yeah. all want yeah. rainbow unicorns anyways, so forget about them for a while and so, do what you like. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah that is true. You can actually uh, go to Internet Fund and, and if you have a... I mean, you as a company can apply for a project. Um, so you can do... Uh, if you want to do a plugin or whatever that is super awesome and cool you can apply it to internet for to actually get paid doing it so yeah that's 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 an but it doesn't really um, uh, there's no not a hundred percent that you'll actually get approved or but you have made the project idea. application and that sorted your mind through so you can get yeah. secondary financing through crowdfunding whatever that's also way so yeah. it's a dilemma I know it but we have to solve it because the WordPress community relies on the volunteering yeah. that. and the business model from yeah. on drone .com. yeah but so pretty much some of getting things done by um, like I said building a good uh, open source company is getting things done having great people a, a good good uh, good culture and good tools uh, but uh, not over people I guess um, Claiming responsibility, like having tests and maintenance plans, and uh, the whole shebang of cool tools. And in the long run, if you want, like, if you want your business to actually, like, um, be future-proof, then you have to start, like, okay, but where is this project going? How can we change it? Um, yeah, that's my thesis, anyway. Uh, Thank you. Um, this is my contact info. So it's time for question, yeah? Um, does anyone have a good question for me? Or a bad question? Or just a question? Do you agree with me or uh, am I... Uh, I can quote Monty Python. You're so 
fucking really wrong right, so I'm gonna come back next year and give uh, an individual collective craziness uh, of business modeling at large. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, Jimmy deserves a big applause.